It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Support for this podcast comes from Invent Together. I bet you didn't know that inventing activity by black inventors peaked in 1899, and it has never recovered. Black and Hispanic college graduates patented half the rate of white college graduates. That's just one of the reasons why you need to know about Invent Together. When our patent system gets more diverse, our nation will get stronger and more successful. Find out how you can help diverse inventors and unleash economic opportunity at inventtogether.org. You are Locked On Rockies, your daily Colorado Rockies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On Rockies fans, welcome into the Locked On Rockies podcast. I am Paul Holden, your host, and we are joined by yet again another great guest here. Getting excited for opening day 2.0, Ethan Smith from Locked On Pirates is here once again. Ethan, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, how are you, man? Uh, you guys are doing your reopening day today uh, on Monday, and we're doing our reopening day on Thursday against Milwaukee. So I guess it'll be kind of like a little appetizer to see how things will be in Pittsburgh in a couple days. Yeah, reopening week for a lot of teams here, and I want to ask you about that, Ethan. But before we get to that, today's episode of the Locked On Rockies podcast is brought to you by Locked On MLB Prospects. If you're the type of baseball fan that can't help but get giddy over prospects, we have the podcast for you. Locked on MLB prospects hosted by minor league play-by-play voice. Arman, Ar- Aram, am I getting that right? Yep. Aram. Layton is the only daily podcast devoted entirely to the stars of tomorrow. Follow locked on MLB prospects on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. Okay. Let's get excited. Opening day 2.0. Don't know why it's called opening day 2.0 versus reopening day. I think reopening day sounds better. Ethan, how does it feel for you as a baseball fan to get to this point in the baseball season where stadiums are reopening, capacity limits are being lifted, you're seeing fans in the stands uh, again? What does that mean for you as a baseball fan? Um, well, I mean, as a baseball guy, one of the biggest things is you just love seeing fans in the stadium again, because that means teams are making money again. Um, Mm -hmm. last year, of course, with the COVID stuff, a lot of teams like the Chicago Cubs for like the biggest example, pretty much had to offload some talent just because they didn't really have the same amount of money that they were usually getting. And I mean, I was at a pirates game when I was visiting Pittsburgh, uh, two, like two weeks ago. And I mean, the stadium, just having people in it again was just nice to see. Like, I mean, there's Indians fans and Pirates fans there during that game. It's nice to see them go back and forth with some playful banter. Um, But one thing I think that this fixes a lot of is kids, especially now, are able to get to see the Fernando Tatis Jr.'s, the Vlad Guerrero's, the Juan Soto's, the Ronald Acuna's, the like, whatever he comes back, the Corey Seager's, the Cody Bellinger's, the Mookie Betts the Jacob DeGroms, they're starting to get to see these superstars play in person. Like Fernando Tatis Jr. last year really came out of his shell, but he didn't get to do it in front of anyone uh, because he didn't make the World Series. But, I mean, Randy Rosarena as well is getting to start to play a lot of in front of guys, and that's what sells tickets is all these big-name players, and it's very nice to see that people are finally able to enjoy these big-name players. Like, as you, for the Rockies, you guys get to see Trevor Story play in person again. So that's always very much a very fun thing to see. Yeah, and and it's I got to go watch uh, the couple of games uh, between the Rockies and the Mariners uh, this last week. Got my first ever foul ball, by the way. I finally got to, finally crossed off that on my baseball bucket list. But yeah, the energy brought by the fans in the stands it, it can't be beat. It felt like a normal summer. It, it, it was it was really feeling like something that uh, we we worked hard to get to. And, and and you nailed it on the head. Finally, players are people are able to see kind of this new era of baseball. We we with like you mentioned mentioned all those names we're kind of in this young player the year these are the players that embody baseball and then yeah absolutely when you're Rockies and Pirates fans you now get to go see in person where your team at and who the players are that you can get to know especially in our case for Rockies fans after missing some pieces and and we'll see what it's like after the deadline Rockies Pirates uh, meeting up again here for uh, Rockies opening day 2.0 first pitch today 310 mountain time 
give me the lowdown on the Pirates lately. Uh, what's been what's been going here? Last five games looks like they are uh, three and two with a series win against division rivalries. The Cardinals, the uh, Pirates, in a better position than the Rockies currently lately. Uh, what can you tell me about the team, Ethan? Um, well, lately the offense is actually scoring runs, which I don't think anybody ever thought would ever happen on the history of the planet. But um, I mean, ever since that 11 to 10 Indians win on last Friday, not this past Friday, but the Friday before that, I mean, they scored six runs in a win, one run in a loss, six runs in a win, three runs in a loss, eight and five in a win over the Cardinals and seven in a win yesterday. Um, But I mean, I'm starting to see this team kind of have a little fight to it. It's like they go into games that like especially close games like the one on Saturday against the Cardinals where they won five to four. They didn't just lay down and give up. They started pitching the ball well. They start they're starting to hit the ball well. I mean, Key Brian Hayes, if it wasn't for a pinch hit um out, he would be on a 29 game on base streak, which was the longest active streak in baseball. And Brian Reynolds is currently on a 12 game hitting streak. So the top of the order is fine, but that's what scares me even going into a series against Colorado is the top of the order is great. Key Brian Hayes, Adam Frazier, Brian Reynolds, Colin Moran, those guys have been killing the ball all year. But after you get past that, it's like you're basically jumping off of a cliff and parachuting and hoping you land somewhere that doesn't have spikes on it. Mm-hmm. Um, but going into this series against Colorado, one thing I think that's always funny is everybody just points to Colorado's record and laughs. They're nine games over 500 at home. Yes. This team is no joke in Colorado. They're no joke in Coors Field. So, I mean, this will be a very interesting series. Of course, tonight, Tyler Anderson and Kyle Freeland are on the mound. So I'd say the Pirates probably have the pitching advantage just based on Freeland's ERA being almost an eight, uh, channeling his inner Mitch Keller for all of my Pirates fans. Um, but this should be one of those series again that's very fun. And ironically, this series could be a big player on the draft picks later this year because the teams are very close to each other. They're 29 and 47 and 31 and 47. So this could be a very interesting series in terms of the draft for next year. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm very excited. I like these kind of series. Uh, I like these series where I feel like both teams are kind of on the level playing field. Um, and of course, both teams are hitting the baseball pretty well right now, too, from what I know. So, I mean, it should be a very fun series in Coors Field. Yeah, the Rockies offense has performed better on the road, but were just shut out yesterday in Milwaukee, five to nothing. Um, they've kept it close throughout Milwaukee most of this year until the last two games where things really went sour. The big problem with the Rockies continues to be the bullpen and the offense inconsistencies. This bullpen has squandered uh, – a ton of great starting pitching performances on the road from Rocky starters. You mentioned Kyle Freeland in his ERA. Yeah. His first three starts of the year were uh, not great, but then he rolls into uh, Seattle and he was absolutely dealing uh, over six innings uh, with seven strikeouts, five hits and only one earned run there against Seattle and a two to one loss for the Rockies. I was watching that game. He looked great. Um, and, and he's a pitcher and he's a player that Rockies fans are watching very much uh, with a close eye. This is uh, the Colorado kid. This is somebody that has that potential to be uh, has had Cy Young potential, rookie of the year potential. And uh, but has, has fallen back a little bit after the injury. But if he can carry off of his last start, I think the Pirates are going to be in for a pitcher that might uh, surprise them when you're just looking off of the stats uh, here. But you're absolutely right. The Rockies are a completely different team at home. Uh, they play better. They hit hit better. They pitch better. Uh, I I don't know why. I don't know how. I don't know what it is in the water there at cores that makes it so much better. Um, There's a a variety of reasons for for the Rockies to be better at home. But this year, especially, they have just been a completely different team on uh, at home versus on the road. I mean, you hear these streaks of of the Diamondbacks and and the Orioles of how bad they are on the road. They are still not worse than the Rockies on the road. And I I can't really believe that, honestly. I mean, Arizona, the the whole was was basically, you know, easily the worst team in baseball last year, yet they still have a better record on the road. And it's incredibly frustrating for Rockies fans. Oh, yeah. And I mean, the Pirates are kind of the same way on the road. They're 13 and 25 or 16. They're, it's really down there somewhere uh, at some point. But um, I mean, it's very interesting because yesterday, I think Pirates fans just all of a sudden got very excited yesterday due to two things. Well, three things. One, they beat the Cardinals in Bush Field. 
So they're going from one uh, beer park to another with a win. So that's always fun, right? Mm -hmm. Not only did they do that, but Key Brian Hayes yesterday, I'm sure you saw this because I think I posted it in our Locked on MLB uh, group chat. He literally threw a ball from the dugout from third base, pretty much from the dugout closer to the stands than he was the first base and threw out Yadier Molina. Now, of course, you'll hear, oh, well, Yadi's slow. Who cares? Right. What kid is making that kind of throw like that? Yeah. And he was all over ESPN. And I think it was nice to finally see like, hey, this kid is a stud defensively. But then not only that, Max Kranich in his MLB debut throws five perfect innings. Right. If it wasn't for a weather delay, he probably goes out there for another inning and maybe does it again. Of course, they didn't fulfill the perfect game, but it's five perfect innings. He's the first player in like 75 years to do that in his Pirates debut. So, I mean, it's really fun. But Pirates fans have to be somewhat optimistic as to what's going on here. Key Brian Hayes is a like bona fide like hit. There's no way this kid is going to be bad. You have a guy like Brian Reynolds, who a lot of things are going on right now with you, you extend him or trade him. You definitely have to keep, you have to keep him. Um, check out some of the stuff over at Bucks in the Basement if you get the chance. They wrote a story today about um, his trade value, and no team's trading that much for Brian Reynolds. I'm sorry, but mm-hmm. his trade value is way up there. And then, I mean, you have guys like Arolenzi Contreras, who just entered MLB's uh, Baseball America's Top 100 list. So, I mean, it, it, it there's a lot of things, especially – and I would say with the Rockies, too, um, Ramil Tilapia, as I like to call him. I like to call him <laughs> Ramil Tilapia. Uh, he's one of the most energetic players in baseball. Uh, yes. If they decide to keep Trevor Story, which who knows what's going on with that situation, the Rockies have some pieces despite losing Nolan Arenado. I mean, there's a lot to like about these two teams. And, and that's important to remember as fans, too. As frustrating as this year is for Rockies fans, there are pieces there that you are excited about that, that get you energized and that make you want to go to the ballpark. But you do have to take that realistic look for the Rockies. And, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about trades and what you, your mindset is on trades. But before we get to that, we all know we should be eating more fish to get our omega threes and protein, but the seafood counter can be intimidating. Which fish tastes, which fish tastes the best? Which type of cut? Can you really be sure about the quality? Wild Alaskan Company takes the guesswork out of buying wild-caught seafood. Wild Alaskan Company delivers high-quality, sustainably sourced wild-caught seafood right to your door. Choose from salmon, whitefish, or a combination, and every month there are different specials to explore. I got my box in, and the salmon and the fish are delicious. One of my favorite things is, too, you got to freeze them, but they are super easy to thaw, and you can be making the fish very quickly. We've done fish tacos. We've done grilled salmon. We've done all sorts of stuff with the box that Wild Alaskan Alaskan has sent me and they are delicious. Get your nutrition from nature with wild Alaskan company. And right now you can get $15 off your first box of premium seafood. When you visit wild Alaskan company.com slash MLB, that's wild Alaskan company.com slash MLB for $15 off your first box. Wild Alaskan company.com slash MLB. Make sure to use our URL to make sure they know that we sent you. This episode is brought to you by HP plus. In a world full of smart devices, shouldn't your printer be smart too? It is with HP+. These printers know when they're running low, so you always get the ink you need delivered right when you need it. Plus, you save up to 50% on ink, so you can print whatever you want, as much as you want, any time you want. Huh, that is pretty smart. Get six free months of instant ink when you choose HP+. Conditions apply. Visit hp.com smart for details. Okay trades all this stuff going on rockies and the pirates are are in the midst of that some people are saying trevor's story might not get dealt depending on the way the front office feels do you think the rockies make a mistake if they don't trade trevor's story yes <clears throat> yeah you're right they, it is it's an absolute mistake right there's just no way that he's going the odds of him re-signing with this team are slim to none john gray's been on the record of him saying that he wants to come back to colorado in the past that's the other kind of trade piece a lot of people have been talking about but trevor story has avoided the question all year he's gotten the classic we'll see what happens when we get to that point we'll do this we'll do that i i, I just think that you know trevor story is looking to go elsewhere how are you not going to take advantage of this? This is the this is the problem of having a team in a key transitional year missing three pieces of the front office. If you were the, if you were in charge of the Rockies, what what do you think that they can get for Trevor Story at this point? I mean, 
I would say just based on his pure talent alone, you should be able to at least get a top five prospect at the least, right? I mean, like that's what you would think. But, I mean, you also saw the Nolan Arenado thing, and I think that was just more of like a rash decision. I right. think that was really like just one of those in the moment, we need to just do this kind of deals. Um, one team that I would watch right now, and I don't know how much you'll like to hear this, but Corey Seager, nobody knows when he's coming back. And if the Dodgers want to repeat, who says that they don't go and trade some top prospects to Colorado for Trevor Story? That's one thing that I've kind of kept my eyes on a lot this year is there's very big reasons to think that Uh, teams like the Mets could even look into Trevor story as well. I know they have uh, Francisco Lindor, but Lindor can move around the diamond a lot. Uh, From what I know, Trevor story can also move around the diamond a lot. Another team to watch the Oakland athletics. They're trying to fight with the uh, Houston Astros. Um, So of course, Trevor story is better than any player on the pirates from what I would say, at least. Um, but on our end, I mean, you have a guy like Adam Frazier who's hitting 330 right now. You have a guy like Brian Reynolds, but I doubt that he gets traded at all. Uh, Colin Moran could help a team with a power bat. Jacob Stallings is a damn good catcher. And it's just like both of these teams, for as bad as they are in terms of record, actually have a lot of pieces to deal. Right. Um, one guy that's interesting to me, though, and I don't know how you feel about this, and I haven't really heard his name go around too much, but Herman Marquez. Is he staying in Colorado or is he like a trade candidate as well? You know, this is one this is one I, I've been asked a few times. I think Herman is staying. I hope Herman stays. I really hope that the Rockies <laughs> in, in, invest and embrace this starting pitching lineup. We've this is the this is a core of mo, of four, I'm gonna say four people that can mostly Chi Chi Gonzalez has popped in and out, but he really doesn't have anything special that I think on the level. Of, of the first four in the rotation. This is a, a starting rotation that has shown success at Coors Field. It, it's a, a, uh, a rotation that has been with the team for a bit. I don't see Herman going anywhere, but I definitely can see teams being interested in Herman, especially after late. He goes perfect into the sixth inning against Seattle uh, there on, uh, what was that, Wednesday, um, and only, I think, allows two hits. I don't think he's allowed more than a handful of hits in his past three starts. Started the year shaky, but has completely come back to be the guy that we know uh, who he can be. One of those little autoplay ads as I'm getting my stats there. But... I haven't heard a lot of talk about Armand Marquez. Honestly, in terms of trade talk stuff, it's been a lot of John Gray, mostly because I think uh, contract year type stuff uh, for, for John. Um, and I believe Herman has a couple more years under the deal that he signed not too long ago, but I think Herman Marquez could, could make a lot of teams better. And, and, and I think if I was to put my money on a Trevor story trade, I do think Oakland's going to want to pull the trigger on the rental. I think is what is what they're going to try to do to get him there because they desperately need a Trevor story to see if that team can do something. And then Trevor might like it and uh, being in California might like the AL option uh, and, and being there. He might be interested in re-signing in a, in a young, exciting team that hits the ball well uh, there in Oakland. Maybe the uh, stadium uh, uncertainty and the location of the team might might play a factor into that. But at the end of the day, whoever, Tre- wherever Trevor story ends up, whoever is going to get him is going to be, is going to pay a lot of money. I mean, that that's, that's the big thing. Wherever Trevor story ends up for this rental, they, if they're going to keep him around for a long time, they're going to be ready to pay. Cause I think Trevor story is in for a big payday this off season. Yeah. And I mean, I wouldn't see why he wouldn't be in most, like in most reasons. And I mean, outside of Max Scherzer, I'd say he's probably the most valuable trade asset. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, cause Max Scherzer, if the Nationals don't trade him, that will be the biggest mistake they could possibly make right now. Because I understand they're not that far out of the lead right now in the uh, NL East and stuff, but that team's not winning that division. I'm sorry. You don't you don't fall that far behind and then pick yourself back up again like you did in 2019 when this team is nowhere near as good. Right. Um, but, I mean, the trade deadline, I don't think people realize how close it is. Uh, it's June 28th. There's a month a month from now, literally a month from now. The all-star break is in like a week and a half. Teams have to really start thinking about this. And the draft is also coming up too. That's going to be huge for Colorado and Pittsburgh. Right. I mean, very huge. I mean, Ben Sherrington is on the record as saying they have to hit on this pick if this rebuild wants to go right. And I mean, it poses the question of, do you take the high school shortstops or do you take Jack Leiter or Kumar Rocker? Um, It's going to be very fun to see how that goes. Also, I mean, for your guys' sake, 
you really need to hit two because you don't want to trade Trevor Story and then make a bad draft pick or something like that or not really add a lot of pieces back to it because then what do Rockies fans do? I right. mean, who do you root for? Um, we all love Ramel Tapia, but I mean, is he really the face of your franchise after Trevor Story leaves? Yeah, that's the, you know, the, the big thing with the Trevor Story trade is we do have a young guy, Brennan Rogers, who is playing a lot of second base right now. And uh, he would be the, he would replace Trevor Story at short with Ryan McMahon probably playing second or third. And then Joshua Fuentes filling out uh, there as well. So, uh, none of those people scream the face, but you're going to root a lot for Ryan McMahon. And if, and if Brendan Rogers continues to be successful, like he is now, I think he's, I don't know. I don't know what the true ceiling for him is. I just think he's going to be a solid ball player. I think he's a solid addition to the team. Great defensively, great offensively. If he can continue to grow and get better, he's really had a great approach. Now, finally, that he's getting consistent at bats and, and consistent playing time, which was something that for some reason, the Rockies just did not give to one of their top prospects. So yeah, that would be who you're looking for as a Brendan Rogers. And uh, yeah, that's what the Rockies will, once they lose Trevor story, the identity crisis kind of will be there waiting for the next generation of Rockies to step up because once Trevor story leaves, other than the starting rotation, that's basically it for the contention window of players that, that were there and making impacts other than obviously Charlie Blackman, of course, who uh, I, I don't think he's, he's not going anywhere. He'll be finishing his career in purple and they'll, they'll just tuck him in right field for as long as they possibly can um, with Chuck nasty there. So lots of questions, lots of trades. And like you said, the deadline is looming every day. We get closer and every day makes me a little more worried that we haven't seen a lot of smoke to the Trevor story, trade story fires. Oh, there we go. A lot of story right there, but um, shifting gears a little bit. Obviously we talked a lot about Rockies and the pirates and both of the teams have struggled this year. But as we've mentioned, there's been some uh, players that have been, Really, really good. And I'm going through the uh, all-star finalists here. No Pirates, no Rockies. Do you think any Pirates players got snubbed? Do you think uh, Pirates players got snubbed on the all-star ballot this year? We do have a finalist. He's just not leading in the voting. Ah, okay. So I, I, I all right. I missed it. So it's, it's Adam Frazier. Adam Frazier is not leading in the voting uh, for second base behind Ozzy Albies. I think that's a mockery, honestly. Uh, Ozzy Albies, don't get me wrong. The kid is great, but he's not hitting over 300. He's not hitting 330. Um, Adam Frazier will definitely be an all-star. Uh, you look at his 2021 for, uh, Ozzy Albies. I mean, he has a 253 average, 12 home runs, 46 RBIs. I think that's kind of what's pushing him over Adam Frazier. Um, just because Adam Frazier, of course, is not hitting the long ball like that. And I think a lot of like players and uh, people who vote on the all-stars are just kind of looking at that. But then you look at Adam Frazier, for example, 331 average, 37 strikeouts, 29 walks, 28 RBIs, four home runs. I mean, how is that not an all-star? Right. And then another guy that a lot of people have been actually getting really upset about that's not even really being talked about as an all-star at all, and I think will be a huge snub, is Brian Reynolds. Um, I mean, the kid's hitting 312, 13 home runs, 44 RBIs, 36 walks, 44 runs, and two stolen bases on the year. You look at some of the other guys, of course, they have the name uh, recognition, but if Brian Reynolds isn't at least on the bench as an all-star in the outfield, I will be very upset. Um, but outside of that, I mean, Richard Rodriguez has a good chance to get there as well just because he's been a phenomenal closer. But for the Rockies, I mean, it does surprise me that they don't have at least like one person in there. I wouldn't know exactly off the top of my head statistically who should be there for them. But the fact that they don't even have one player up there in the final votes is kind of insane. And disappointing. I mean, it's a course feel. It's it's a home. I, I, however, though, if anything, I think this is this should be a sign maybe to front office that, hey, you are, you're reaping what you sow here. But I think there's Rockies that deserve to be 
in in the the conversation. I think Rymel Tapia honestly legitimately deserves batting 298, five home runs from the leadoff spot, 36 RBIs, uh, 757 OPS. He just had a, a double digit hitting streak. He's been the guy for the Rockies at the top of, of the order. He's played great defensively. I think he would have been at least a, a good enough uh, a backup there. But that's just the thing with these Rockies. Without the big exposure and the bit and, and the success, the Rockies need the success to get on the national scale, or else. They just who else do does anyone know other than Nolan Arenado and uh, Trevor Story? I kind of figured Trevor Story might slide in there just off of, uh, you know, his his name and everything. But there's a lot of great shortstop play being done there. So I hope Iraqi is involved in in the all star game in, in some form. I just don't see how I think Ryan McMahon would have had a better chance, too, if uh, he wasn't he's not hurt, but they sat him a little bit due to some uh, inflammation and some soreness. So I think he could have made a better case. But yeah, Ryan McMahon and Ryan Al Tapia were the two that I think deserving of of all star game recognition. I don't know if they'll get in there and anything, but that kind of leads me into my next question. I did a podcast last week where I was talking about my dream home run derby, and I, I wanted to uh, for this year, and I wanted to run that by you, Ethan. Who are you? Shohei being in there is great. I'm excited for Pete Alonso as well. Uh, Shohei is is the, the big thing, but who are you hoping to see in the home run derby this year? Um, well, I heard about Trey Mancini, and that actually really made me uh, very happy to see him, especially with everything he's dealt with. Um, it's very nice to see him come back. Uh, we've also seen, of course, Shohei Otani. I think he's just must watch baseball. Yep. Um, Vlad Guerrero Jr. Is he competing or is he deciding not to? He he has officially said no. He is focusing okay. on on rehab and or not rehab, but just rest and 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 trying to help the the Blue Jays compete in the second half. Yeah, um, I would love to see him in there too. Uh, Tatis obviously said no, and then followed that up by hitting three home runs <laughs> the following day. Right. Um, of course, Ronald Acuna looks like he's going to. That's going to be very fun. One guy that I would love to see in there, just out of just pure having watched baseball over the past decade or so, just throw Albert Pujols in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like throw Albert Pujols in there. I mean, it'd be amazing. Just let him fight with the young kids. Like, literally yeah. just be like, here, Albert, go out there and prove that you could still hit the long ball against these guys, especially in Coors Field. It'd be fun. And then because it's in Coors Field, I mean, I'd still like to see Trevor Story in there, too. Right. It would just be nice to have, like, somebody on that team just, like, be represent like represented there. But, I mean, that's pretty much – I'm happy with the field. I'm really excited to see what Trey Sto- or Trevor Story – not Trevor Story, mm-hmm. Trey Mancini can do. Um, but we'll see. I mean, the home run derby for me, I do think it's lost some of its luster, but it'll still be fun regardless, especially being in the high altitude. I agree with you there. I want Trevor story in. I, I think he, if he's not, if he's not playing in the game, I think it would be just with all the trade talk stuff. It would be a great way for, for Rockies fans there in attendance at the all-star game to, to, soak up and enjoy what we love Trevor story or what we, how we were introduced to Trevor's story. And that was through the long ball. Obviously his defense is great too, but Rockies fans know the story of Trevor's story began when he was hitting all those home runs to start off his career and all the 480 foot plus home runs. And, and just that I, I am really, really hoping that Trevor story gets in there and, and swings the bat, especially because he's swinging it well, lately especially when it comes to the long ball uh so i i hope to see trevor story in there i am really disappointed by tatis and guerrero jr though i I, i'm not gonna lie but the other kind of out there ones and and i guess i'm looking at this report here aaron judge has already declined i was i would have liked to see a stanton or a judge or a harper one of those names that you know can can really launch the ball there in Coors field i think uh they're the they're the kind of usual names but I think they would be some some fun names to get in there as well. I, I'm a, I'm kind of against you. I, I'm kind of the opposite. I think I, I'm more interested in the home run derby uh, lately, and uh, since the changes in the format uh, myself, it's been a, it's been really exciting and fun. Still think it drags a little too long though. Um, yes. But yeah, uh, you know, it's not going to be perfect. And and honestly, it's a sell. I, I think though, I remember as much as it's a product for the fan, it's also a celebration for the players and things like that. So if, if the players enjoy it, if they have fun and they don't see it as something super strenuous, I'm not going to get too, too up in arms about it, but uh, 
I don't know that that that's just me. Uh, we'll get ready to wind things down here and, and talk a little bit more Rockies Padre, uh, Pirates. I was about to say Padres. We're not gonna we're not we're not talking about them today. But before we get to that, I want to tell you about the best tasting protein bar ever, and that is Built Bar. Did you know that Built Bar has nine delicious flavors plus the occasional limited time flavor, including coconut, coconut almond, cherry, raspberry, mint brownie, peanut butter brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel. There is something for everyone. If you can't decide or haven't tried all the flavors, you can get the mixed box where you'll get two of each of the nine flavors. Most of the flavors have only 17 grams of protein, 130 calories, four grams of sugar, and only four grams of net carbs. Order today. Get that raspberry mint brownie or my favorite, the peanut butter brownie. Order today. Go to BuiltBar.com and use promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off your first order. That's BuiltBar.com. Promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your first order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at BuiltBarPirates.com. Tonight, kicking off a three-game series for opening day 2.0. I still don't like that name. I still wish it was reopening day. Big storyline for me tonight is Kyle Freeland. That's what I'm watching a lot tonight. Ethan, what are you really watching for uh, tonight as the series kicks off? This episode is brought to you by ESPN+. Plus. Dustin Poirier and Connor, the notorious McGregor will settle the score at UFC 264 on Saturday, July 10th, exclusively on ESPN+. Plus. After Conor McGregor defeated Poirier in 2014, Poirier evened the score in January, setting up the most highly anticipated rubber match in UFC history. UFC 264 is exclusively available to ESPN Plus subscribers for $69.99. Or sign up now to get UFC 264 and an ESPN Plus annual plan for $89.98. Visit ESPNPLUS.com slash Spotify. Can the Pirates continue to be on an offensive tear? I mean, that's realistically what we have to keep hoping for. Uh, The pitching staff starting wise has not been great. The bullpen has been very solid as of late uh, and most of the year. But um, I mean, can the team continue to just hit the baseball well? And honestly, Coors Field is the perfect ballpark to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, You realistically have to hope that Brian Reynolds, Adam Frazier and Key Brian Hayes can continue to keep doing what they're doing. Uh, Brian Reynolds, as mentioned, is on a 12 game hit streak against or uh, here right now. And he'll take on the Rockies to look to keep that moving. Um, And right now, one thing that's very interesting that doesn't go in their favor going into the series is their last in Major League Baseball and hitting home runs. And then they're going into a ballpark where home runs usually dominate. So could they realistically hit some home runs here? Uh, Brian Reynolds, of course, leading the team with 13. Um. And if you look back at the last meeting, I mean, the Rockies won the last time four to three. The Pirates, I believe, won the series. Uh, Daniel Bard got the victory there. Charlie Blackman just turned up and went turned back the clock on him that, in that game, three for four with two doubles. Um, but we'll see. I mean, I think it's going to be a very competitive series. Again, the Rockies are the betting favorites, which doesn't really surprise me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if that's supposed to surprise me or not, but I mean, they're a much better team at home than they are on the road. And of course they are in Colorado this time, but again, as mentioned too, this could be very big in terms of draft stock. I mean, 29 and 47 versus 31 and 47 must see baseball, right? Yep. Yep. I mean, <laughs> for, for fans, I, it is must see baseball. And I guess, let me ask you that as a, as a fan, I don't necessarily ever root for my team to lose. How do you kind of embrace the, I don't know, tank mentality or things like that. Are you kind of in a way hoping that the, the, the pirates lose this series for better draft for better draft position uh, versus the Rockies? Are you hoping for them to, to, can, you know, obviously you want them to win, but I think that is a real big conflict for, for, fans of teams that are in rebuilds or struggling um in a way yes but in a way no just because i look more on terms of individual performance and usually individual performances as of right now are actually like putting this team in winning situations so if we were to lose say this is like what a three game series say if we lose five to four six to five and seven to five or something like that if all the games are close There's no reason to be mad because then one, you lose, but that means you played well enough to at least put yourself in every game. The Colorado Rockies, I think, have to look the same way. I mean, if you lose games by a run, that means you were in play to win that game. You're teaching your players how to be competitive and stuff like that. But then if you go out there and you lose 10 to 3, it's like, well, now you're just getting put down. 
Like right. now it's like, what did you really learn from this game outside of just losing another game? Um, so that's really what I'm looking for. I wouldn't say I'm going into the series hoping we lose because I don't ever really hope that right. for the Pirates. I mean, especially when this team was above 500 to begin the year at one point at 12 and 11. So especially with them playing good baseball, they've won two out of their last three and split a two game series against Chicago. Keep the good times rolling. I mean, I just, like I said all year, I don't see this team being a hundred loss team. I still live on that. I will still die on that Hill um, until it is proven wrong. So, I mean, win the games you can, and if you're getting blown out, just accept it and move on to the next one. But individual performances are way more important right now than team performance, I would say. I think that's a great mentality, and, and, it's, and it's great to, to, to hear that as well because it puts into perspective, I think, a lot of what a lot of Rockies fans needs to, need to consider as well. And, and yeah, you're, you, we never root for the Rockies to lose. You're just kind of being a realist in the situation. And the Rockies have lost a lot of close games or the bullpen has come in late and blown games. That's what I think is really frustrating for Rockies fans is there, there is competition. There is a competitive nature there. There are elements of this team that do compete with you know, the Padres in, in, in some ways they did, they did end up sweeping the Padres, but uh, in, in the series there at Coors, but that's kind of an anomaly, but uh, Ethan, thank you so much for your time. We'll wrap, we'll wrap things up here, getting ready for opening day 2.0 at Coors Field tonight, Pirates, Rockies, Ethan, where should everyone go to stay up to date with all things Pirates and all things Ethan Smith? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at M. VP underscore Ethan, as you'll see me probably live tweet the Clippers game tonight. Hopefully they keep their season alive, but you can also follow the show at Locked on Pirates. Of course, I have an independent blog called ESS Sports Talk as well, where I talk about basketball and all things Pittsburgh. So that's where you can find all of my stuff. I forgot big Clippers guys, a big night for you as well. Watching. I'm sure you're going to be way more focused on the, the slug fest between the pirates and the Rockies versus uh playoff Clippers basketball. Well, it'll there. work out. Cause this game's at five ten. that game's at nine. So hopefully it'll be done by then. Oh, those beautiful East coast sports times, Ethan, thank you so much for your time. This is going to do it for the locked on Rockies podcast for today, uh, Monday, June 28th, before we go, Today on the Locked On Today podcast, the Los Angeles Clippers are back in the game. Speaking of the Clippers, get more of the sports news you need in less time in the Locked On Today podcast. Follow the Locked On Today podcast on the Odyssey app or wherever you get podcasts. Ethan over there, Locked On Pirates. He'll be covering the team all year. You can follow him there. I'm Paul Holden. You can call it, follow me at Paul Holden 33 You can follow at Lock, L-O Rockies on Twitter as well. But Ethan, thank you so much for your time. Oh, yeah, of course. The Bucks take care of business. The Astros take revenge. Here's what our local experts are locked on today. 38 points from Chris Middleton powered the Milwaukee Bucks over the Atlanta Hawks in Game 3 of the Eastern Conference Finals. The Bucks now lead 2-1 in the series. Are the Bucks finally ready to make their finals leap? Listen to our expert Kane Pittman on Locked On Bucks today for that. And for more on Trey Young's ankle injury, listen to Brad Rowland over at Locked On Hawks. The Portland Trail Blazers finally have a coach. The team announced a five-year deal with Chauncey Billups late Sunday night. Was this the right hire to keep Damian Lillard happy? Head over to Locked On Blazers for a full breakdown of the hire. Are the now legit Houston Astros out for revenge? The answer is on the Locked On Today podcast. All the sports news you need in under 20 minutes. Follow Locked On Today, today, wherever you get podcasts. Local experts on the biggest stories. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.